Morning, everybody. Morning. How are we doing? Good. Welcome to our Sunday service. Uh, welcome to those who uh, will be joining us online later. Uh, for our service today, you will need the green booklet, and the service will start at page one. Let's have our opening hymn. We meet in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandment and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God who forgive all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray the collect for today. <coughs> Lord, you have taught us that our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please stand for the Gospel? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Mark chapter 4, reading from verses 26. Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground night and day while he is asleep and awake. The seed sprouts and grows, but he does not know how it happens. The earth produces its crops. The first, the leaf of the blade pushes through. Then the head of the wheat are formed. And finally, the grain is ripened. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle. For the harvest time has come. Jesus said, How can I describe the kingdom of heaven? What story can I use to illustrate it? It is like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it becomes the largest of all garden plants, it grows long branches and the birds can make their nest in its shade. Jesus used many similar stories and illustrations to teach the people 
as much as they could understand. In fact, in his public ministry, he never taught without using parables. But afterwards, when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please sit? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, today's sermon is going to be about seed, generosity, and why we need to be generous. But before the sermon, I want to ask you a question. Do you want me to continue in this parish as your parish priest? It's an honest question. Do you want me to continue in this parish as your parish priest? Yes. And the second question is this. Do you appreciate what God is doing in this parish and in your life since my arrival? Think about those questions. Now, the parable of the growing seeds is exclusive to Mark's gospel. It presents a comprehensive picture of the coming kingdom of God. There are three stages in the parable. The first stage is that the sower scatters the seed on the ground. The second stage is that the sower appears but not active. After planting the seed, he leaves it and goes about his daily business sleeping and waking up without anxious thought for the seed. And thirdly, the sower's ultimate interest in the harvest. In the six verses that I've just read to you in Mark's Gospel, the word seed is used six times. So it needs our attention. It is important that we examine the word seed. Now, this is what Jesus said in Luke 8, 11. He said, the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. Now, if the seed is the word of God, then there are four key implications about that statement. One, we need to prepare our hearts to receive the word of God by fixing our minds and hearts on God and to be sensitive of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Two, once the ground of our heart is prepared, we need to plant the seed of the word, the seeds of the gospel into our hearts. How do we do that? Well, by daily reading of scriptures and meditating on the word of God and thirdly this will enable the seed to bear fruit and the moment we are bearing fruit we are able to sow the seeds of the gospel into the life of unbelievers and non-Christians now in order for us to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and to sow the seed of the gospel in the life of unbelievers and Christians, we need to be generous individually and corporately as a church. And this is where my slide comes in because charity begins at home. Mr. Newman, the slide, please. It cost £1,387 to run this church every week. I want you to think about that. £1,387 to run this church that we have inherited from the people who have gone before us. This church had been here 
over a thousand years old. Please, next slide. It is my responsibility as the priest of this church to preach and teach effectively about giving, to enable you to learn giving for life, to nurture generosity, and to reimagine the offering. Because giving is part of discipleship, or part of discipleship is giving. Next slide, please. The Church of England has 12,500 parishes up and down the country. Our income is one billion pounds. Of that, 450 million are from individual giving. And of that, <laughs> a third is only regular givers. A third, so if I count 10 people from here and divide that into four, one of them, or divide that into three, is only one of that group that gives regularly. 70 million pounds are from grants, 80 million pounds from gift aid, the money we get when people give us the offering and they say they work, so the taxpayer gives us some money from those money. That amounts to 80 million. 55 million are from events. 50 million are from legacies. And I will talk about legacies uh, in, in a little while. 90 million are from trading. What the Church of England does with the money they get as surplus. Next slide, please. please, please. Why am I saying all of this? I'm saying all of this because in order to share the gospel effectively, in order to sow the seed of the gospel in the lives of non-believers, we need to learn how to be generous in-house from home. The first of the ripe fruits and all the gifts brought to the Lord who go to the parish priest. <laughs> the first batch of the dough must also be given to the priest so that the Lord will bless your homes. Let me explain what that means. I put that on Facebook last week. Uh, some of you may have seen it. What this means is that in the Old Testament, the children of Israel were farmers and herd men and women out of their farm and from their crop, when they gather their crop and from their farm, the first fruit of the crop will be given to the priest because the priest of the Old Testament Bible didn't work. Of course, I don't work. I live and breathe this work, this ministry. This is me. While you'll be sleeping, I'll be having sleepless night trying to formulate sermons. It is me. So the Old Testament clergy did not work. And what they used to look after themselves and their family is this particular instruction that God gave to them. So if in the Old Testament era, you had the whole of this parish, including the airport, as your farm, and the harvest time comes, if you gather all your harvest, the Bible is saying take the first fruit, which is 10%. 10% out of this big, vast land, including the airport, with corn and grain and potatoes, you name it. 10% of that, which is a fraction of the produce, goes to the priest. And they use it to look after themselves. And indeed, what goes on in the temple. Next slide, please. please. Will a man rob God? Yes, or yet, you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have I robbed you? You, are, you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. 
You are cursed with a curse. Don't be so frightened about that. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, echoing our previous verse in Ezekiel, that there may be food in my house. And try me now with this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be no room enough to receive it. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, when we talk about the tithe, in Genesis chapter 28, I believe, verses 13, Isaac, when God delivered Isaac, when God showed Isaac the vision of the ladder to heaven, Isaac said to God, of all my income, I will give you a tenth of my income. When the, when the Bible says, or when God says you, you are robbing God, do you know what it means? If you don't pay tax and offering, and let me pause here and say, for all those who have given regularly in this church to enable the ministry of this church to flourish, we thank you and we bless you. And we encourage, we encourage you to continue to do so. But when God says that you are robbing me in tithe and offering, what it means is that you are actually robbing God from blessing you. So if you withhold the tithe, if you withhold the offering, God is saying that you are actually robbing me from the opportunity to bless you. That's what it means. Last week, I put into the offering plate and the treasure, the tre our treasurer will, um, will be my witness. I put into the offering plate 10% of my earnings in cash. And I did that to lead as example. Because if churches up and down the country will give of this fraction of the 10%, the Church of England will not be in the financial difficulty that it's in. Our diocese are in critical financial crisis, and I mean critical. And this parish is running at a deficit. So my dear friends, in order for this ministry here to continue, we have inherited it from the people who've gone before us. This church has been here for a long time. We need to be generous in our giving, generous in our offering, because charity begins at home, legacies there. At the moment, this church is surviving as a result of money that was given to this church by somebody. So our financial situation is in red. And I mean pure red. Red, red than the carpet. We are running on deficit. And we are depending on a legacy. Money that somebody gave to us. 70,000 plus. And we are being able to continue our ministry because of that money. So when we talk about generosity... That is what I mean. Coming back to the question I asked you earlier. Whether or not you want me to continue. If you go to Tesco's, Asda, Sainsbury's, Morrison's. If you go to bus garage. Even the bus drivers in their changing room. When somebody is having their birthday. At least one person will go out of their way and buy a cake. Put it somewhere in the changing room. And the person who have their birthday will share the whole cake with, with their colleagues and friends. Something happened in this church on the 23rd of May. It's my birthday. I don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't normally fall on Sunday. But do you know what? I did not receive one single card from any member from this church. I'm not saying this for you to feel bad. I have struggled with this. Honestly, I have struggled with this. 
I have three spiritual directors, one in London, one in Harlow, one in Cambridge. I have consulted all of them. And the conclusion was that I have to speak to my parishioners. Because I have spoken about forgiveness, not bearing grudges, not getting or bearing offense. So I have to let you know, if you were a parish priest somewhere, and on your birthday that falls on Sunday, not one card. Again, that's something to think about. But you see, when we talk about generosity, it starts with us individually. And I'm going to introduce something in Christmas. Come Christmas, I will introduce something that I've done in my previous churches. Every member of this church is going to buy themselves a gift, a lovely gift, wrap it up, write a name of somebody, some other person in this church, write your name on the gift, and come and place it at the altar. On Christmas Day, I'll call people to come forward at, at some point in the service and they can get their gift. We need to learn to be generous individually and corporately. It is only after that that we can be generous with sowing the seed of the gospel in other people's life. How do we know that we have the love of God? If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be seen in that person? Dear children, let us not love in words only or speech but in action and in truth. Remember, the farmer who plants only a few seed will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Each of us must decide in our heart how much we want to give. And we should do it not reluctantly or in a response to pressure or as a result from this preaching but we should do it because it is our duty as Christians to give to the advancement of the kingdom of God it is our duty as Christians to make sure that we are preparing the ground for the next generation when we are gone because guess what 20 to 30 years time, most of us will not be here. It will be the generation that will come. My question is, what are we leaving for the generation? Are we going to leave a vibrant church, a successful church, a church that miracles, wonders, and signs take place because we are sowing the seed of the gospel with generous heart? God loves a cheerful giver. The seed is the word of God. And if the seed is the word of God, we must prepare our hearts to receive the word into our hearts. We must be filled with the fruit of generosity and righteousness. Then making sure that we are sowing those seed to non-believers. By sharing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's respond to the sermon by saying the creed. Would you please stand? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, very God of very God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has been through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in his faith. Strengthen and inspire our bishops and clergy in your service. We thank you that we can now meet in person in this ancient building. Gradually, things are improving. Lord, we thank you for Kingsley, whose first year with us has certainly been unusual. With the help of John and Mark, together with the use of modern methods, we have had the services taken into people's homes, inspire and bless their ministries as they lead people to you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Bless and guide Queen Elizabeth as she comes to terms with the loss of Prince Philip. We pray that her faith will sustain her and that her family will help her with the royal duties. We pray for the work of her countries in attending the G7 meetings. We hope that their actions will be in accordance with your will and that generosity and compassion will make a difference to the world. The poorer countries are particularly in need of help to buy vaccines to make a difference to the health of their people. Lord, we know that we should honour one another and seek the common, common good, and we hope for your help with this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all of those who suffer in mind, body and spirit. Give them the hope in their troubles and bring to them the joy of your salvation. Father, we are extremely grateful for the tireless work from all in the National Health Service. Whatever their position, it's irrelevant. We, we know that they really do need our thanks. In addition, the emergency services and many volunteers who also have given up time and help in the distribution centres, sometimes even after a really heavy day's work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, our Gospel readings always gives us something to think about and some to take action on. Since the COVID-19 situation, Many have been left on their own with nobody to speak to, nobody to, who they, they know, sorry, that they can uh, speak to. So why not take time to speak to someone? It can make a difference. This week, we have lost a dear member of our church family, Dorothy Rickard. Many years ago, she used to work, walk to the church across the fields before the runway was even extended. Thank you for her faithfulness and witness in her worldly life. We are comforted to know that she is with you. Father, please be close to her family and friends at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all of your saints, 
we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you please stand for the peace? Jesus Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace by waving. Let's have our next hymn as I prepare the table for communion. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, and he put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by raising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, 
These gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of all men, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom. All who share this one bread and this one cup. So that we, in the company of St. Lawrence and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and in whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Savior taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean. Our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of heaven may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Friends, I'm going to come round and give you Holy Communion in one kind.
say together the prayer after communion on page 13. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still afar off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, just before the blessing, I have said that we are going to start Bible study, but of course we are not going to do that. I'm waiting for the government to give all clear uh, in terms of uh, restrictions because we can only meet and relax and chat after we have that freedom. So we're waiting uh, to, to receive that news. It may be longer, but let's just hang in there. Uh, uh, so once we get that green light, I will formulate the groups who will start meeting and learning the scriptures together. Our news sheet. Uh, some are at the back of church. Please take some with you. There are, as always, Bible readings, hymns to help you uh, during the week. There are contact details there if you need help from any of us. Uh, and that will be a blessing to you. So please take a copy. It is also on our Facebook page and on our web page. So if you have internet, uh, internet access, you can access those through that. There is an event coming up on the 3rd of July, I believe, yes, 3rd of July. Uh, it's a concert between, uh, in a garden between the hall and the vicarage. Uh, please bring your packed lunches, wine, whiskey, whatever, you bring it and enjoy yourself. Uh, there will be music around and Mr. Lee and Mr. Glenn has particular collections. So if you need any particular collections, uh, please speak to them and they, they will play for you. Uh, and you can relax. Would you please stand for the blessing? My dear brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Shall we have our final hymn?
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.